Rowan. Um, you and I certainly have one thing in common. They were both from Compton. And I know right. I came up in Compton at a time when it was just a place where we lived and we mm -hmm. grew, we came up, and you know, that was the life, whatever it was. What was your dream when you were a child? What did you want to do with yourself as an adult? Before I tell you that, I got to tell you something. I got to correct it. I said, I'm from Compton. You live in Compton. It's a difference. Well, that, that, you guys explain that difference because I lived there all until I was okay. 17 years old. See, the difference is, because a lot of people that you live. You talking about the streets? No, see, a lot of people that live in Compton, right? Mm -hmm. So they go outside and they go, okay, I live in Compton. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to school. Mm -hmm. After I come home, mm -hmm. I'm going to play Atari, Nintendo, one out. You got people from Compton mm -hmm. who ran around in Compton and participated in everything that went on in Compton. If it was mm -hmm. a neighborhood party, if it was a neighborhood fight, mm -hmm. if it was a neighborhood football game, mm -hmm. that's from Compton. But so you, you know, don't think I did that? Oh, you probably did, though. That's, yeah, that's a whole other cool. conversation. I, anyway. I just play with you. I, but it's, if I you were just, saying street, Compton, and... I'm just messing with you, I, probably did. Yeah. What did you want to do? What was your yeah. dream as a child? I when went you, to, when um, you, you said, I'm a grow up, this is what I want to do, what was the dream? What happened was um, I went to, to Foster. And I was in uh, Compton. I went to elementary school, and they just had different people come to you know come to class and talk to us about careers, mm -hmm. and ask each kid in the class, "What you want to be when you grow up? What you want to be when you grow up?" I told them I wanted to be a football player, because mm -hmm. when I was five years old, my father put my age up to seven, eight years old, and I played football. That's when I first started playing organized football. Mm -hmm. First year I played, I got an extra trophy. It was cool, but when I decided I wanted to be a football player, it was like, there's nothing in the world more hard than to do is become a professional football player, so pick something else. You know, you won't, you won't make it. So I thought about it. There wasn't nothing else I wanted to do. I said, look, this is what I'm going to do. So that's what I followed up. And I've always been the type of person where, in class, I've always been one of those, I want to make my own shit up. Like, if the teacher say, well, write this, and, you know, we're going to have a spelling test, and we're going to do mathematics, yeah. I'd be like, I ain't doing it. And they said, well, draw something, tell us something, tell a story. I get to tell them, look, I'm going to be a president here, I'm going to do this. I've always been the type of person to just have a dream of having a whole bunch of shit and bring all my friends along and make something happen. So I always want to be, I just want to be me. Really? I never just set out to say, I want to be this. But football was, was my goal. And when I got to that level where the football was, it was like fourth, a lot of athletes and the coaches, it was a whole different twist than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. It sort of disappointed me, so I decided to do something else. But it sounded like you always did have the dream in mind to be the head of, and like you said, bringing people along with yeah, you. Yeah, I want to always, I felt that family and unity is, and love is more, is the most important thing you have. Mm -hmm. And that people feel that other things stronger than love, but there's nothing stronger than love. Mm -hmm. Love and hate is the same thing. People might say, well, sugar way out, he could be mean. That's mm -hmm. love. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Love is good, love is bad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, either way it go. Love is the most important thing, and I just want to be part of a family, which I've always been part of a family. Let's, uh, okay, let's just change tapes. Oh, one more question here. Okay, with George Price, so, um, Papa G. Papa Hollywood. Papa Hollywood, that's right. <laughs> you named him Papa Hollywood, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Papa Hollywood. Why'd you name him Papa Hollywood? Well, you know, he the, he the grandfather of, you know, Death Row. And there's nobody in the business more Hollywood than Papa Hollywood. He know how to sit and blend with all of them. He know how to do all the Hollywood stuff. Yeah. And you know, we, we was in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Everybody else got shorts on, t-shirts on, you know, and just take the shirt off, it's all right. Mm -hmm. Papa Hollywood gonna come out there with the little doctor boat shoes on, socks rolled down, shades, an umbrella, you know, all the extra stuff. Bottle of champagne, you know. <laughs> so, you know. But he was that missing link that Defo was missing, so it was cool. Really? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like he is certainly part of the family, no doubt about that, but an invaluable part of the family. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because he is the one, he's your link to the media. He's right. the one that keeps us coming. We keep, like the cover of Vibe magazine, for example, mm -hmm. which was a dynamite, dynamite picture, that whole concept. Before Papa Hollywood, mm -hmm. we was getting used. You know, like you had a talent and you got the credibility mm -hmm. and everybody else was using us. They were saying, if you want Snoop, mm -hmm. give us four nine blinds. If you want this, give us this, you know, give us that. They was mm -hmm. trading, they was trading something. Mm -hmm. And then when Papa Hollywood came, he came and said, look, this is Death Row. If you want Death Row, you got to deal with Death Row. Mm -hmm. And 
by us trusting him, we backed him. Like if somebody called me, like if you call me, you can be cool, I can meet you at a club, mm -hmm. meet you at a restaurant, I don't care if you got a miniskirt on. You said, look, we want to do an interview. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing shit unless you talk to Papa Hollywood. So we, you know, we get each other back like that. So that give him, we put him in power. So a little short skirt wouldn't help. Oh, him I ain't gonna help. I ain't gonna trick you. Let's change tapes. Like if a person writes something, they should get paid for the shit they wrote. Mm -hmm. They should get the credibility to say they wrote it. If they produced it, they should get paid for producing it, and they should get paid, you know, and their credibility for letting the world know they produced it. Mm -hmm. In the past, a lot of record companies are built where people will pick the star. They go and say, okay, mm -hmm. you are a producer. So everybody who do the tracks, we're going to say, you done it. They didn't do it. We're going to take it from you because y'all too young. You're only 18 years old. This person older, so we're going to give him all the credit. So that's a bad mistake for his death row or anybody else to do. So my vision is to say, look, let all the little young guys know if they come to death row and they produce the track, they get their credibility, they get their money. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the artists. That's one vision we have, and that's what we're definitely doing right now. Mm -hmm. And the other vision is that we're making a whole, we give something for everybody. Because if we do so much stuff for the community and for the kids, we just can't say we're just going to do hardcore rap. Like now we got R&B, we got Michelle A, we got Daddy Boy, we got a couple more groups. We got, um, we got Hammer, you know, that, that's, that's, that's saying a lot. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, one of the things, my vision with Death Row, Death Row going to be the people who say what's good and what's bad. Because a lot of times people will look at an artist or look at a producer and say, they're not happening no more. Mm -hmm. It's over with. So we were sitting down and it was a conversation even with Hammer. I felt and still felt mm -hmm. that Hammer was the best entertainment, entertainer in the business. Mm -hmm. So the minute the record sales stopped and a lot of other people felt that it wasn't good no more mm -hmm. for, for as they benefit, they wanted to shy away from them. Me, Tupac, and Snoop were sitting down. Let me cut that off. My page are on ghetto. You know, I'm still ghetto. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> take, the, take the boy out the ghetto. Yeah, but, you, uh, know, you know. <laughs> I don't know about no boy. Uh, but you know. I didn't mean you particularly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got one pass. It's cool. That's nah. all right. No, okay. <laughs> nah, but the thing is that um, we got a, you know, we got a, we got a little circle. Yeah. Like in our circle, consists on for the guys. Yes. It's myself, Tupac, and Snoop. So we sat down and we was, you know, we was eating and we was, we was conversating. I mean, Hammer go way back. Mm -hmm. So we was like, yeah, people trying to say Hammer, you know, shit ain't the bomb no more. Mm -hmm. So everybody was like, wait a minute, it ain't their decision to say what's good and what's not good. Mm -hmm. It's our decision. So we said, okay, we finna call Hammer and put Hammer on death row. And we gonna go in there and make a record and make Hammer go sell all the records that he normally would sell and show the world. Because there's a lot of people imitating what death row does for us you know, putting records out there. And so the future is to kill all the little games, the little kitty stuff, saying who better and who's the best and who started this, who didn't. What we're going to do for Death Row, we're going to put out like about anywhere to six or ten records out a year. Only time other people are able to sell records mm -hmm. on our style is when we're going to put a record out there. Then they remember what we do and they'll say, okay, Snoop did it like this. You know, so-and-so did it like that. So they'll go and copy the music, copy the lyrics, try to act like them, try to sound like them, and then force the fans, they'll be missing Snoop, so they'll go buy the next person. So it's not, it might not be his style, but you know, they'll still buy it because you know, they're missing what we can put out there. So our whole goal now is to you know, get that done for us getting records out there. And for us, Death Row and myself, goal is I want Death Row to be, which it will be, more like a Warner Brothers, a Sony, a MCA, for we're going to distribute other artists for it's their labels. I don't want to go to a situation where Snoop got his own label. And he said, look, this is my groups. I'm trying to put my compilation together. I'm trying to put my group together. I don't want to be going, OK, good, give it to me. They on death row. I don't want to do it like that. I want to be so OK, Doggy Style is your label. OK, Doggy Style, death row. Death row is now like Time Warner. The only thing different between death row and Time Warner, we still down in with the streets. Our hearts there, mm -hmm. and we won't cross them. How do you stay with the streets, though? Because you, I don't know, do you still live in Compton? I got a house in Compton. You got a house in Compton. And I'll be there, I'm going to tell you like this, I hit Compton at least, I'm going to hit Compton every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stay in my house in Compton at least two, three nights out the week. Mm -hmm. So I ain't one of those It's not difficult who, then to stay in contact with where you came from. No, you, how are you going to be scared of something that you are? Mm 
And I'm not saying being afraid. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know. How are you going to be too good or something where you came from? Mm -hmm. The talent is in the ghetto. When I say ghetto, I'm a ghetto nigga, period, right? Mm -hmm. When I say ghetto, I mean tore down, ran down, because there's a lot of money in Compton. It's people who have more respect for their cars and the way they dress in Compton than they do in Beverly Hills. You get people in Beverly Hills, you, you can look at the, the awards. People in Beverly Hills with money, they might show up there with jeans on, toe up, and shoes. They don't care. You get people in Compton, when they come to work, they're going to be clean. Those girls are going to take their, their county checks, they, whatever it is, they have to be done, they're going to look good. And every person with money, who they want? They be feeding off those ghetto women mm -hmm. with that pretty look, naturally beautiful. Let me ask you something. That Currently, you know, there's one group of people that would love to use as an excuse White people won't let me do this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I see none of that in you. Can you talk to us about entrepreneurialism? You are a true capitalist. You don't seem like the kind of person that walks into a wall and says, oh, the wall's here, I can't go through it. I think you make a door when you come to a wall. Can you talk to young black people, especially the ones who feel like somebody is holding them back? Ain't nobody holding nobody back. You gotta look at something. All, let me tell you like this. I know people say don't curse, but I'm a fuck up. Well, Suge Knight do something, they know I'm a fuck up, so it ain't no big problem. Now, if a fuck up like me can do something and make it, anybody can make it. All through from school, from elementary to high school to college, people looked at me a certain way. You know, like, he gonna get in trouble, this gonna happen, that's gonna happen. And I feel that, and I felt that. I changed my life around and made it, made it work for being an entrepreneur. A lot of people try to put a color thing in it. Yes. You know, they be going like, well, they don't want, they don't want me to make it because I'm black. Right. In the music business, it's prejudice, but it's not black and white. It's young and old. Because, you know, the older people used to be the ones where say, oh, you got some groups, you want to be an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Give me all you got, give me your money, and I'll put your stuff out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I knew some of the people who they call themselves legends in the music business who have been the biggest disappointments in the world. And I used to never say nothing negative about them. No interviews, no nothing, because I felt it didn't matter. I mean, I, I knew Dick Griffey. Now, I knew Dick from, since I was a youngster. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I used to come to Dick with groups, he said, okay, why don't you loan me some money first? Number one, want, let me sell you a studio that I don't own, but Sony owns, but I say I own it, and it's yours. And you know, we bought it, which it wasn't, it wasn't his to sell. Then he'd turn around, and wait till you get all the stuff you got done for his discovering the Snoop Dogg and make sure he had money for his being there with the studio with him, make sure shit go all right. Then he'll tell you, well, I don't believe in rap music. I don't want to deal with no rapper. I don't want to deal with a DJ Quick. But all of a sudden, when it hits, he want to turn around and say, give it to me. It's mine. I want it. Mm -hmm. So it leaves a bit of taste in your mouth when it, <clears throat> when it comes to for his older black men in the business because mm -hmm. I wouldn't say men, males. Because these clowns who call themselves men ain't no, you know, they ain't no men. They males. They walking around trying to take from the, you know, the youngsters and mm -hmm. turn into their they wealth. Because mm -hmm. they went Hollywood and got out of touch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you got to deal with a lot. When you're a young entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you finna deal with the older black men in the business that try to steal what you got. You finna deal with the women who's gold diggers who try to take what you got. Then you finna deal with the guys who's jealous of you, who try to lie on you and put you in jail. Then you got to deal with the police who might be jealous of you who try to put you in jail. So you got a lot on your plate to deal with. Mm -hmm. But if you stay true to yourself and be a man about it, mm -hmm. if you're a man and you're a man of God, you can deal with it. Right now, I ain't saying I want to go to jail. Mm -hmm. But if I went to jail, you ain't going to see me up there crying. You ain't going to see me hanging myself. You're going to see me in jail calling home saying, everybody all right? Y'all got some money? Everything good? That type of stuff. So that's the type of thing that... We, we're up against it. we got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of crazy. Yeah, you should be out encouraging young people who, because I get tired of that talk about we can't do it because somebody's holding us back. And then we see examples like you, mm -hmm. and we're like, wait a minute, somebody's got to be right. Either you're lying or they're lying. Right. So it's, it's very interesting. But one of the things I said not to cut you off is yeah. a lot of the entrepreneurs who make it, it's not really the youngster's fault. It's our fault. Mm -hmm. It's my duty to go back and get them some game and say, look, I made it like this, this, this. Because the majority of the people who make it, they didn't come from the ghetto. They weren't, they weren't no street brothers. They was like, they go, they do it for a gimmick, and I hate that. Mm -hmm. I hate to see a rapper. I hate to see an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I hate to see somebody who went to, grew up in a 
all white neighborhood, our middle class area, right? Never participated in nothing, no drama, nothing for us growing in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. uh, college graduate, there's nothing wrong with being a college graduate. I did it. But they was one of those straight A students, you know, everything was perfect. Then all of a sudden, rap come out. They want to dress all kind of ways. They want to call themselves a gangster. They want to call themselves a street person. They want to say, you know, it's a, it's a problem with Death Row and Suge Knight and Snoop and Tupac against me. It's a war. That's the most craziest thing I ever heard of in my life. I get no stripes for slapping a, a female. I don't hit women. Mm -hmm. Or I don't pray on the week. So how I'm a war with a guy who ain't no man? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have nothing against nobody out there who doing their thing. You doing your thing, you do it. But don't do an interview and say, well, the biggest war is between Death Row and my company. Mm -hmm. Death Row on a whole nother level. If they had a problem with us, we don't have a problem with nobody. Mm -hmm. Everybody know where we're at 24-7, either at the studio mm -hmm. or at the office. Mm -hmm. If it's an event going on, we're going to be the first ones in the front row having fun. <laughs> at the Super Bowl, we're going to be there betting, cheering. <laughs> so we're not the one high. There's a lot of people who make up, like, stories to try to get themselves famous mm -hmm. or get themselves some ghetto power. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong way to do it. You know, if you're going to do it, do it right. If you're going to be with Death Row, have one of these. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Elaine. Nah, she got. Uh, nah, she uh, too. Well, you know, it's that too tight. So yeah, it's too straight. tight. So that's pretty straight. We're gonna go in there uh, probably uh, next week. I got the we're gonna do a video in a couple of weeks, man. You know, we're gonna hook it up. Hook it up. Let's see, we're gonna get ready to do for the movie shit though. So you can see Death Row got the movie things popping. Yeah, everybody the else, yeah, everybody else doing this music. We got the movies. Well, we got two strikes, out. none left. Two strikes, none left. Get Yellow politics. politics. Movies. Check yeah. Out. Death Row films. We well, you know, yeah, we doing some movie shit. That's interesting. I know I'm listening. So the thing that we're doing with movies, like we're doing um, two strikes, none left, right? It's gonna be starring Tupac and Snoop Dogg, and the, and the concept of the movie is gonna be a uh, action comedy and you know like the third three strikes is happening everywhere all around everywhere right? right so that's what's going on but see they're gonna get out of jail and like everybody gonna be betting against them to saying how long they're gonna stay on the street before they go back to jail so they're gonna be trying to do everything they can in the world to s keep from going to jail the person who writing the movie is dj Pooh, tupac writing some stuff in there um, snoop got some input in there and uh yeah, there you go. He got some input in there, mm -hmm. and you know, Pooh the one did the whole thing on Friday. Yeah, I know. But I they stole gonna... it from him, though. Yeah, but I was gonna say, yeah, yeah Friday. You know, though, yeah, huh? mm -hmm. that was his worst work, cause mm -hmm. he got some way better stuff than that. Mm -hmm. But he did the whole thing from Friday, but they mm -hmm. took it from him. Mm -hmm. So you know, mm -hmm. they didn't give him all his credit. So you know, once again, you know, Defo gonna make sure he get his credit mm -hmm. and make sure it's served. Mm -hmm. Definitely doing that. Hammer, you feel at home? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, man, she'll go back 10 years, so, you know, it's another day. I'll let you all have just a little more conversation, and then we're done. Right, Let's right. Switch. You're not really doing the audio anyway, huh? No, you're not Mike. That's why I don't want right, to get too right, much. If you right. talk to him, I can pick it up. If we're right, talking right. out this way, yeah. he's still Mike. So I mean, just a little yeah, bit more, and we just get a little anyway. shopping the same, and that's it. Right. So, Albert, you know, everybody talking bullshit, but you fit death row, because you wear the right jury. You love cars like us. That's right. You like to work hard. That's right. And if you see you riding with Oakland, you going to Oakland. A hard old town. And you know we got over here. We got Compton, Long Beach, good old Watts, and South Central. Hooked up with 619 Dago. Oh, that's right. Dago. 415 510. It's all hooked up. Penitentiary hookup, huh? Penitentiary hookup. All right, cool, man. Get on time. Good. Hands and vibe. Yeah. Remember the hand that no, has Those are Shug's hands. Wow. Uh, yeah, that one. I present him. All right, great. Good. Yeah, congratulations on the nomination. Thank you. That means a lot. Your life has changed dramatically in the last three years and then particularly in these last couple, three months. No doubt. Okay? Yeah, not lying. It's been a big difference. What's it mean to you, especially these last, last two, three months of your life? It is a good reward for the patients of being 
in the maximum security penitentiary. You know, all the times when I could have acted up or all the times when I could have went one way and I was like, I know this ain't forever. I'm going to just ride this out and I know it's going to be my time again. And now it is my time again and I appreciate everybody that wrote me letters telling me to be patient and wait. Everybody that, you know, helped me to see that, you know, as long as you got your faith, you know, you can ride anything. There's, there's nothing too scary where I'm going to just give up, you know what I mean? I've seen hell and everything after it, so. It's been some very interesting articles out recently. Mm, this man here is responsible. Papa G getting a lot of press out about you all. Let me ask a comment about one of the things that I read. Um, certainly you're here at the family now. You all call this a family. Mm -hmm. What's it mean for you to be here with Death Row? It means that I have to give my, hundred, my 110 percent so that all the rappers under me can give they 110 percent so that everybody else, all the peer rappers like the Dog Pound and Snoop to give they 110 percent, mm -hmm. should give his 110 percent, Papa G give his 110 percent. And that's what makes Death Row, Death Row. That's yeah. what makes us have record-breaking album sales and things like that, is we give 110 percent. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's good. It just means that, you know, I'm somewhere where if you're persistent and efficient, you get rewarded. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's what everybody wishes for. Your focus seems clear. I think, uh, like you said, being in maximum security certainly does a lot of things for one's head and one's focus and, and desires and dreams. Um, you come out, you hear a lot of uh, controversy going on right now about rap, just the Time Warner dropping Interscope and a lot of things that have resulted from people saying it's a bad image, it's bad for young people. Tell us your comments on that. i said so many comments on this, but basically it's a hypocritical view because what you're saying is it's okay for us to live in the dirt, in the gutter, in less than human um, conditions, but it's not okay for us to tell people that we're living in these conditions. Everything was cool, you know, the ghetto was okay, it was, it was, it was, live it was um, habitable until we started talking about exactly the, uh, what were the repercussions of living this type of lifestyle, what happens when you live in this kind of environment, what, what type of person it changes you into. Now all of a sudden it's like you can't talk about that. But this is what we live in. This is we don't have a, a, a choice. You know what I mean? It's either we really kill people, do dope, sell dope, and have murders and do all this crazy stuff, or we talk about the fact that we get we got so close, man. If it wasn't for this rap thing, we would really have to do A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's not good. That's not nothing to look up to. But that's the truth. That's how it is. You know, every human being inside your chest or your stomach or whatever, we all given from God. Um, the survival instinct and everybody has to to live self-determination you have to live you have to be able to live and survive and and live like a human being not like an animal so whatever it takes to live like that is what happens whatever it takes if you put Bob Dole in those conditions he would he would do the same thing so would see Dolores Tucker and she wasn't so rich she didn't have the pearls and she didn't have the NAACP backing her up and all these conventions and coalitions backing up and she was by herself and she was on welfare, she would love our music because she would know what this music breathes. She would know where we from, what we talking about. But from where she at, she can't understand and not understand where they coming from because now that I got money, it's hard for me to hear a lot of the stuff that we got to listen to. But I can't see, I can't be a hypocrite though. I got to understand it's, it's only a few dollars that's keeping me from being that right there. Mm. Image is everything. Papa G is taking good care of you guys, you know. Tell me what it means to have George Price behind you all out there in terms of publicity, really getting the word out and the truth as you all want to speak it. What does that mean to you? I think that along with the other artists on Death Row, Snoop, Dog Pound, Trey, everybody, Nate, we're all outstanding in our field. And I think that Suge, in terms of being a manager, a CEO, he's outstanding in this field. I think that Papa G is just. Um, keeping that tradition along by being outstanding in the field of publicity and, and getting our, the things that we have in our head to the heads of millions of people, letting them see what we see and, and look at it how we want them to look at it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the vibe cover, that's how we feel, like a mob, like a family. You know, we want people to see that. Not mob like guns and things, but mob like family. Like you say to do this, we do this. Mm -hmm. And like with the New York Times cover, that's like 
a, the ghetto coming home picture. You know what I mean? With the cash and all of that. Every time somebody come out of jail, they got to take those kind of pictures. They got to get their humanity back from all the days they had to bend over and have some man looking in they, you know what I mean? For all the times they had to strip naked, for all the times they had to cut their visit short and couldn't hold their girl and couldn't kiss their girl. Now you get to floss like that. You know what I mean? Now you get to act like that. And it's not because I'm going nanny, 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 nanny to other people. It's because I'm doing this for the guards. You know, for the for the people who thought I was guilty for everything, for all the people who who didn't believe that it could come to this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, they could shoot me five times, call me a rapist, and throw me in jail, and I'm gonna bounce back. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give up. You know what I mean? That shows the um, resilience of a young black male and a death row inmate in particular. Thanks a lot.